Hi folks, welcome to our Bible study today. Um, we're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 11 to 22. I'm going to read it from the NIV. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Jesus Christ, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Father, when we come together to read your scripture, as ever, we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to help us to understand this word and the truths and the life of the word and appropriate it to ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, you know, the Berlin Wall was a barrier that divided Berlin from 1961 to 1989. It was built by the East Germans. The wall completely cut off West Berlin from surrounding East Germany and from East Berlin until it was opened up and demolished in November 1989. Nearby, memorial markers show where people lost their lives, attempting to escape to freedom. There were many desperate and tragic struggles to breach that wall. Paul reminds believers that once there was a wall keeping them from the presence of God, that wall was there because God is holy and sin separates us from God. Sin always leads to separation. Archaeologists have uncovered an inscription from the outer wall of Herod's temple in Jerusalem, which was destroyed by the Roman army in 70 AD. It carries a stern warning from the high priest. No foreigner may enter within the barricade which surrounds the sanctuary and enclosure. Anyone who is caught doing so will have himself to blame for his ensuing death. The Jewish temple was full of partitions. There was the inner court of the priests and the temple proper containing the holy place and the holy of holies where the Ark of the Covenant stood. Access was limited to these sacred places to select Jewish priests and only the high priest was allowed once a year on the Day of Atonement to enter the holy of holies. There were other divisions, the woman's court and the outer court of the Gentiles granting limited access to the sacred spaces within. Christ came to remove all barriers, verse 14. Paul is saying that a new person has been created, making all believers one in Christ. We are reconciled through the cross. Those who are apart from Christ are in a bleak condition. The wall built by sin keeps them from God and is insurmountable, impenetrable, unless they turn to the one who tears down the barriers. Folks, we are all one in Christ. Jew and Gentile, of course, but you and I too. You may be similar to me. You may be completely different to me. You may come from the same culture as me. You may come from a different culture. You may be a southerner. You may be a cockney. You may be a northerner. You may believe that mushy peas come from the north of England and that down south we've never heard of. You may be from Cornwall and believe that any pasty that's made out of Cornwall can't become a Cornish pasty. You may be from Cornwall and put 
the jam first and then the clotted cream on your scone. I mean, maybe from Devon, where you put the cream first and then the jam. Paul says it doesn't matter. Paul says any dividing barrier, whether they're silly ones like I've just given you, or whether they're real ones that says, you know what, you're rich, I'm poor. You're privileged, I'm not. You are of this culture and I am of that culture. You know, Christ's death on the cross tears down any hostility, any barrier. And in Christ, it doesn't matter what the colour of your skin is. It doesn't matter what the sex that you are, whether you're a man or a woman. There are no others. But it doesn't matter what is going on in your life. There is no barrier between you and I. Even if you're not a Christian and sin keeps you out of the kingdom, even that barrier can be torn down by faith in Jesus Christ. That is an amazing truth. It's the truth of equality. It's the truth that God comes for all of us and he values us all just the same. Do you know the truth of that this morning? If you know the truth of it, it should set you free. Let's pray. Father, I pray that we are truly able to understand that we are not superior to anybody else, but neither are we inferior. We are not a better Christian than anybody else. We are just Christians. We are sons of the Most High God because of the cross and because of what Jesus accomplished there. And I pray you send your Holy Spirit to help us to understand that and to live that out. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, folks. Thank you for watching. And I pray that the truth of this freedom that we have in Christ and the equality that we have in Christ sets you free this week. Amen. God bless you. Of course, I do have three questions for you today. First one is this. Name a group that you are or have been a member of. It could include childhood groups such as the Scouts or Guides or a sports group or a church group such as a life group. What are some of the privileges of being a member of that group? Secondly, what barriers did Christ remove? And how did he do this? Verses 14 to 15, but also see Romans 8, 1 to 4 and Hebrews 10, 8 to 14. In what sense has the law of Moses been set aside? And why was that necessary? Verse 15, and to help you, you can see Colossians 2, 13 to 14 or 1 Corinthians 9, 21. Thank you.